In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 71. Uh, 71, just in time. We, you know, we, we planned out an episode last week and had pretty much nothing. <laughs> and we were going to record that by last weekend. We didn't get to it. Yep. And thank God this week happened because <laughs> holy shit did the sports world blow the fuck up yeah it, it's some pretty pretty major things have happened in the past week so um let's get to it Start. all right so first things first let's talk about the nfl well, the long-awaited uh nfl story of the week is the first look at the covid helmet the helmet that confuses the fuck out of me because <laughs> i i don't see how this thing is idiot proof <laughs> no it's not it's dude. Just, yeah well i mean the problem here is as i try to center myself talking about <laughs> idiot proof um let's see here the problem is god damn it <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the problem is is that this helmet, um, I don't see how a player can't spit and, like, have the same problem uh, or the same issue as, that they're trying to prevent. So it, it it's a dual-layered filter system that's supposed to catch the, the uh, sweat, perspiration, whatever... Uh, uh, someone sneezes yep. into it or coughs into it. Whatever the f- it may be, it's supposed to catch that. But the problem is, is you still have distance between mouth and face mask. <laughs> so you can uh, still spit or sneeze down. Yeah, there's, a, there's some air gaps still. Uh, yeah, there's air gaps, but, you know, it, it's a... I guess a decent first draft. I mean, keep in mind, I think was it Oakley was the ones who created this. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying Oakley isn't reputable, mm-hmm. but I don't know if they're reputable in CDC in <laughs> uh, FDA approved face masks. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I mean, at least like if that type of mask is going on somebody like to actually you know cover them as an actual mask it's a lot different than it being part of something exterior to the to the head right so i mean i have no doubts that this mask is gonna be a great mask if some if it was like material for somebody to wear it like over their ears and stuff Mm -hmm. but I'm more concerned about all the uh, gaps that the NFL helmet still has. I mean, they're needed, don't get me wrong, because, like, you gotta oh, yeah, breathe. Absolutely. But, uh, that is the more troubling thing. All, like, even though 90% of it goes in front of you, there's still that 10% that's going down and up and whatever. The only thing that I'll say is, well, two things. One, face Mac face mask penalties become huge this year because if you grab the face mask you're basically dousing your hands and whatever (laughs) germs are your gloves in germs dude yeah everybody better wear gloves this year and two at this point are what are the odds that you'll just see players wear like a cloth mask 
under their helmet. Something that covers up their mouth, and then it's still... It's not gonna happen. I mean... I look, mean, I... It, if my solution is, hey, I, I want to be safer, so I'm going to wear a cloth mask under the helmet, I'm just not going to play this year. But And that's because of the... Bre- like, you're already restricted in, like, okay, how many avenues can air come in so I can breathe, right? This filtration mask is going to let air in, but it's filtering it, so it's not like... It, it's not like being out in the open, you know, and so, like, I'm just going to put more layers between me and air and just start breathing mask. And the second thing is, what about mouth guards, right? Okay, what, what about them? No, no, I mean, I'm I just wear, asking. I wear, I wear one when I play deck hockey. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But, like, usually you clip the mouth guard into part of your mask somewhere, right? And then it, it goes from there. Player sometimes. It depends on the face mask. Yeah, but so a lot of like where the players put the mouth guard, if you're going to attach a mask to it, is not going to happen anymore. Or is not possible for the. They're just going to have to be grown men and keep the mouth guard in their hand. I'm sorry <laughs> that it's a minor inconvenience. I really am. These guys train. Uh, in like 115 degree weather in Florida in the off season, the minor inconvenience <laughs> of having to wear a mask is beyond me. These are the world's best athletes. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying. A like, wide receiver runs 60 yards down the field on a running play that loses two yards. Yeah. But what I'm saying there, is the level of exertion is already beyond what it should be. Oh, uh, no, no, I agree. I'm just saying, like, in this mask design, right, like, you have to take into account, like, obviously, players wear mouth guards, it goes in their mouth, but, like, they're not going to be able to string it through their mask, so, like, are they, they just have to keep it in. And so, are they allowed to take their helmets off on the sideline because somebody's going to ask for that? You know, you still have those oxygen stations. Like, my my whole thing is not that like this is gonna be a pain for the players to play in it's what what happens around what like you're playing 60 minutes of football you're actually exerting yourself for what like 10 15 minutes if that uh so like what around like you know you usually have oxygen on the sideline and you're around a bunch of people can you take your mask off what, what are you doing like like that is the bigger logistical nightmare than playing the game with these things yeah so again w- the, so what you're saying is if wearing a mask is a problem because of breathing but you're going to let these guys go on the sideline and do whatever the fuck they're going to no, no, do. I, I'm not saying they can the do that. The breathing doesn't asking, fucking matter. I'm asking, what do they do? Because this is just like, we're only talking on the field. I'm asking, like, I, I want to figure out, like, that. that's more of a, a statement saying, like, how does it change the sideline, right? Because so far, we've only been concentrating on the fact that they're on the field playing with these things. But... We have to remember for about 40 to 45 minutes, they're not on the field playing with these things. Unfortunately, I mean, there's not going to be, there's going to be limited media. There's going to be limited uh, photographers, stuff like that. So in a theory this year, social distancing becomes easier. They can get more benches and stuff on, on the sideline. You can go end zone to end zone, or at least, I don't know, 30 more yards on each sideline with player distancing, Mm -hmm. because you're not going to have cheerleaders. Yeah. Uh, You're probably going to put more coaches in the booth. Okay. um, Because the booths can actually, if you can figure out the wiring and setup, you can have, you know, only a certain amount of coaches in certain suites or booths. so there, there's potential to space things out on the sideline mm-hmm. more so than, you know, a normal but, year. Obviously, I mean, but. yeah, more so than a normal year, but you still have certain people like your athletic training staff is still on the sideline. 
you you probably still have one coach on the sideline at least. Oh yeah, for sure. At um, least. Yeah, and I, I understand like you're gonna like spread more people out, but you still have all that equipment that you have the equipment handled teams have equipment handlers for, and a lot of it like in the one case I'm bringing up with of like use of oxygen, right? It requires one thing: your your helmet basically comes off, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like saying, like this is a for a first draft is or even a second draft. I'm pretty sure they've been through a couple iterations at this point. Is pretty good. It's just it I, I want to see how this interacts with like the time when the player is not on the field. The big thing is it needs uh, something over the chin. Hmm. Just, I don't know, something small, which is going to be hard because when you take a mat- helmet on and off, something between the chin and where the face mask is, say it's a mesh or something like that, is probably prone to being ripped. Yep. So we'll have to see where it goes, but mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's out there. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to touch on with masks? And helmets. This was more arguing than I was really planned to plan to get into <laughs> on a Friday afternoon after work. But <laughs> no, no, we, we got a lot done there. So all right, so on let's to move the, on to the next part. Probably the more sought after news, I guess. Uh, Washington, Soft, yeah, the skins, the skins, yeah, yeah. The chicken skins. <laughs> All right. Made in an air fryer. <laughs> You're liking your air fryer too much, man. I think I got to cut you off. Made wings twice and chicken tenders. <laughs> uh, anyway, the the skins, they released a, a statement saying that they are reviewing uh, new names for the team. Um, while while uh, well the statement essentially says that they're retiring the name Redskins, which is a great thing, and it would have made a whole lot of fucking sense if they had done it without a gigantic Washington Redskins logo letterhead. Yep. <laughs> you take text over an image in that sense, or you just put the NFL logo. And then put Washington Redskins next to it. Mm-hmm. You don't fucking put the culturally insensitive logo that you're rem- moving on from right smack in the face of people as you say that you're moving on from it. Yeah. I may not know business um, <laughs> to an extent where I'm amazing at it, but this is just common sense. <laughs> you don't do this shit. <laughs> So yeah, they they fucked this up. I mean, and then they continue to fuck it up, as you'll find out in a minute or two. Well, well, hold on, hold on. They're not in in a minute or two. It's not really their fault. It's part a, of it. It's it's there, a. There's the harassment part that is very much their yeah, their fault. But it's also like a a byproduct of the situation. Well, also a byproduct of the situation is. They have to slap their logo with uh, a red skin on it as a byproduct of the fact that they named themselves Redskins in the first place. I mean, hold on. You want to know how many times Redskins is stated in this release, right? You got the name Washington Redskins, right? Then you have Redskins Park still in this logo section. Then you have the address, which also has Redskin in it. Okay. Then you have the website. By the way, I'm I'm willing to bet at least ten bucks that they're not going to change the name of the street. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have the street name, which is Redskin Park Drive, right? Then you have the website, which is Redskins.com. <laughs> then, in big bold letters, you have a statement from the Washington Redskins football team. Okay, I, I wish I could say I was counting here. And then you finally have Redskins mentioned in the body of the letter once. Yep. 
So that's at least five times, I think. Try seven, I think. I said at least five. I told <laughs> you I'm goddamn done with work for the day, man. This is it's work, Friday dude. afternoon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh god. And now I'm insensitive for making fun of Jesus even though he's not my god. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, anyway, now that this little rant is over. Uh, yes, it was a little rant. Uh, yeah, let, yeah. Let's move on to the, the That's next like issue. I have a little problem with you. <laughs> All right, here you go. Take it away. All right. So, yeah, I wish I could read this, but I'll, I'll pull it up on mine. Um, so, the fun part about this week was... And, and I... I this only makes me curious about what the hell's going on with domain names. Uh-huh. Because, and according to Will Brinson on Twitter, a, a nice real estate agent in Alexandria, Virginia, has squatted on 14 <laughs> trademarks uh, for the potential Washington football team. I like how things are like Washington Freedom Fighters is twice because he had to include the one with the abbreviation in it also. Well, because you know what? It's like the Chicago Bears. If you the Chicago Bears, I think it's uh uh have the letters uh Gale um G S H on the uh, shoulder pads. Mm-hmm. What if they did the same thing but tried to trademark the logo if they were uh Washington? Mm. Um now, I don't know if it's trademarked for Chicago, but you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, design of it that they're trademarked. All right. So here's what was squatted on. The Washington Red Wolves, which, by the way, the number of times that the the option for the Washington team still involves the color red in it <laughs> is... You know, you're going from one level of sensitivity to another. Because then you get into the stereotype of, you know, oh, what kind of people are considered red? And then you're... So, like, yeah. Um, The Washington Tribe. Okay. A little less insensitive, but you're still kind of... I mean, if the Cleveland Indians are changing their name and their nickname is the Tribe, maybe... I mean... Uh, it's less se- insensitive, but it's still. I mean, I think the it's Cleveland, still towing some line. Isn't the Cleveland Indians logo the the bigger issue? It is, but the name is still okay. Like, I mean, the Indians already retired uh, wearing uh, the uh, mascot on the on the hat. Yeah, okay, they but that was the bigger letters. issue. Okay. But that was that was a few years ago. Yeah. All right, so the Washington Red Tails, the Washington Monuments, which is, I think, a great name for a team that always finishes in third or fourth. (laughs) They don't really move in the standings. Um, The Washington Veterans, which is a great ovation until you you realize how bad the team is. (laughs) The Washington Renegades Gridiron Football. Now, that's just too long. Yeah. Yeah. the Washington Braves professional football team. Again, it's a little too long. But I mean, you'd probably be calling it the Washington Braves and professional football team is just there. But then we're getting back to the same shit that the Atlanta Braves are now going through. But the Atlanta Braves, to their stupidity, have decided that it was the tomahawk chop. That was the insensitive part. (laughs) Yeah, it's not the name at all. Yeah. Um... Let's see, the Washington Red Tails, which is uh, an ovation to uh, fighter pilots. Mm -hmm. Um, The Freedom Fighters, Mm -hmm. which I guess it it depends on who's in the White House. Um, (laughs) The War Hogs, which... That could be taken the wrong way. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Plus the obesity rate, I don't feel like, is big enough in Washington, D.C. to be synonymous with that name. I know, that, that that's rude to say, but 
it, it's not warhogs not as bad as rad skins yeah no that that one's just bad get it out of here that that's a name that lasts in the late 60s and early 70s and then dies mm -hmm. uh the red tailed hawks and then the potomics which apparently is a neighborhood in maryland Mm -hmm. I tried to um, look up what a Potomac is, and I, I was left so, more confused than when I started. So the only thing I notice in here is that the red tails appear twice. Um, number three and number eight. Uh, also, like, oh. <laughs> also, like, if if I was gonna be named the Red Tail Hawks, I'd rather just be named the Red Tails. So I feel like that one can just get out of here. I don't think you're going to name the team the Washington Monuments. Uh, veterans, probably not. Uh, <laughs> Potomics. So the Red Tail Hawks, the thing about that is eventually a team adapts a shorter nickname. It always happens. And we already have the Seattle Seahawks. Uh -huh. So what are you, what are you going to have? Two teams that just go by the Hawks? Red Tails, dude. Well, I'm saying that's like if they went with Red Tail Hawks, there's I think there's just too much of a margin for error and mm -hmm. duplication. Yep. All right. So, um, what other names are we? So, so like we've gone through some of these names. Mm -hmm. So uh, others on the list are like Red Hawks, uh, even Senators. Americans or generals, I really don't agree with. Warriors, brave hearts, I really don't know about that one either. Uh, Renegades, uh, which was on the list, but you know, it's, those are probably like the pos uh, some possible name. So, this is bias. I think that the Steelers should have the right to rename themselves to Renegades at any point, just because of their. They play Renegade every game to pump up the defense. So Okay. I I think that if there is an alternative name in case by any chance Steelworkers turns into a stereotype or something like that seventy years from now, we should have first dibs. Because we've been playing Renegade for twenty five or twenty plus years now. Okay. Um Again, we talked about the Braves. I don't like the tying in of senators, generals, uh, anything political. I think you got to keep that out of sports as much as you can. Yeah, that's Plus, there's already – there's also the already the Harrisburg senators, the affiliate for the Washington Nationals. Mm -hmm. And then I just don't like Americans because mm – -hmm. I don't like that either. You're, it's, you're claiming too much of a territory with that. Mm-hmm. So, I think, and again, these were just options reported by, you know, columnists of possibilities, you know, people trying to be creative, and then we said, you know what, we're not creative, so these are our takes <laughs> on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a fan of a lot of these. I think, you know, the internet seems to love Red Tails, but they love Red Tails because of the concepts by social media. Which are like happen, unfortunately. But or uh, like if they did red wolves or something, that could be cool because mm -hmm. a wolf like howling into the night sky would be kind of dope, kind of like the Minnesota Timberwolves, but like with a better color scheme, like a more. Uh, I like the Minnesota Timberwolves color scheme. It's the same as the Seattle Seahawks, but. The thing about it is it doesn't really scream masculinity into anything, so you need to go a little bit different with the approach. All right. Uh, all right. Anything else you want to touch on football? No? It's a, it's a long week for uh, the Washington uh, headquarters. <laughs> all right. Uh, of all NFL teams, they probably had the most to do. Yeah, everybody probably put in a solid 40 hour work week. Yeah. <laughs> Between the harassment and all this other shit. All right. Oh, no. On to our next sport, which is the NHL. I'm letting you take the lead on this one, by the way. You okay. have more research on it. All right. Um, well, at least you're part of it. So, uh, the 
CBA, uh, they have agreed to a CBA, uh, the NHL and the NHLPA at least, through the 25-26 season. Which uh, is huge. No, no additional lockout, only like seven years after the last one. Yeah. And, Can and you I, believe it's already been seven years? It's been quite a while, dude. And I'm actually quite surprised. But the lockout, the lockout feels like it was only like three years ago. Yeah. Um, I'm quite surprised at some of it. And it's actually really good for the sport, I think, in general. Uh, the fact that in 2022, uh, they'll be able to go to the Olympics along mm-hmm. with 2026. Um, and, like, there are slight things like the maximum salary of the uh, uh, of entry-level players is going up to, I think, by 2026, it'll be a million. Uh, instead of, I think, the current They don't make is... anywhere near that now. Huh? They don't make anywhere near no. that now. No, entry mean... level? Yeah, like, Heischer and them got paid nine twenty five or something. What was it? Annually? Or overall? No, no, their entry level, like, the first, the, the contract was annual, like, nine twenty five or something like that. I thought you, I mean, there's veterans that sign for minimums lower than that. Yeah, yeah, but the maximum the maximum salary for the a drafted player basically is now is going up instead of nine twenty five in like the in six years it'll be a million. Um, anyway, and I think the the salary minimum is also going up to like seven seventy five instead of seven hundred or something like that too. Is the is the cap going up as well? Uh, I think. I think so. I didn't see uh, concrete numbers come out, uh, and I didn't take time to read the agreement either. But uh, like those are the the general things. Uh, at least good for the sport is the fact that the NHL players will be allowed to go back to the Olympics for at least the next two. Um, That's good. And again, like for you and I, it's it's great for the sport because we're still not the most popular sport, but the Olympics we get the most traction from. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially because, uh, excuse me, I'd say that hockey and basketball are by far the biggest Olympic sports in terms of team sports. Yep. Uh, they gain the most uh, eyes and traction whenever the Olympics are going on. But the thing is, the U.S. has cornered ba- international basketball competition and dominated so yeah. much. Yeah. Whereas- uh, you know, uh, Russia, Canada, Slovenia, or not Slovenia, but Sweden. there's Sweden. That's it. Yeah. Um, where you have a number of countries that are competing for top spot in uh, international hockey play, especially on the Olympic stage. Yep. And then you throw the U.S. in, uh, in because every once. In, I'd say every one in three Olympics, I mean, they have a good enough team to potentially win a gold. I mean, but that's I the think, competition. I think like we have a good enough team most Olympics to attempt to medal. I'm not going to say I'm gold. saying. I'm no, saying, I'm yeah. saying it takes. I'd say once every twelve years, they have a, a team where uh, the prime years of some of like the top six line up to be like. They can make a run at gold, but mm-hmm. they're, but they're in terms of caliber is probably silver. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I, I do think that, uh, and a lot of the NHL players, right? Uh, even a, a lot of the star players come from overseas, which is, I feel like the biggest thing. As in it this. should be. No, no. But I think it's the biggest thing in this, in the fact that like the NHL not being the Olympics actually hurts, like competition as a whole right whereas the if the nba were to opt out of the olympics that's mostly just the american players mostly say that you know you have leagues like the khl over in russia where a lot of khl players have kind of been uh signed straight to nhl without having gone to ahl ross or Mm -hmm. you know ahl or anything like that so other countries get the benefit of uh, being able to put KHL players like Ilya Kovalchuk in the past, which are basically NHL players on teams. Well, a lot of Americans are grinding to be in the NHL and then don't get to play for their country, which happened in the last Olympics. And then 
the said drop off for the Americans where they basically are like bronze or not meddling at all. Right. Is is the big statement. Right. So it, it then takes away from the growth and popularity I mean, of the sport. But I mean, like, the point is that the sport as a whole benefits from Alex Ovechkin being on the Olympic stage. Primarily, right? You have yeah. Ovechkin, you might have Crosby, and maybe uh-huh. one or two others, like Lundqvist did net, right? I mean, not, not at this point. Uh, no, but, but like in the past. Yeah, absolutely. In the past, right? The NHL player, like the NHL has always benefited more from foreign players that play in the NHL being in the Olympics, I feel, than American players. Absolutely. But if you want to grow the game in America, you have to have a, a competitive top tier American presence in the Olympics. Right. But uh, because it, it draws the, I the eyes of young children who want to grow up and play the game. Right. And if if they if the American team suck, it's easier to just turn the game off. Yeah. True. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, that that's huge for the CBA, um, and I'm glad that we won't have to go through another right. lockout for another so, six years. And you know, just to kind of step away from hockey for a second, I think the NHL and the MLS both had the ability to extend the CBAs uh, for a few years down the line during the coronavirus p- pandemic, which just goes to further show how badly baseball fucked it up. Because baseball couldn't salvage one season uh, and is pr- now more prone to a lockout after 2021 instead of making moves. Meanwhile, two sports leagues yeah. that are going towards a bubble and didn't give a shit about, you know, uh, losing money mm-hmm. have gone and secured their long term futures. Right. But the other thing is, right? Um, actually, it was both the NHL and the NHLPA had like a season extension option each, and it, it's weird because both of them declined to extend the CBA, but stayed in negotiations. Uh, this CBA would uh, run out in twenty twenty two, actually, or twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two season, I think. Okay, so it it, only, it has four years. So this no, so so this one would have run. Yeah, so this one. The new CBA ad for, adds four years. That's actually pretty good for neither of them opting an extension, which would have brought it to 2022. And for neither having really, you know, a, a perfect scenario for what's going on right now yeah. either. I, I, I'm just surprised and I, I'm glad it worked out. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it worked out better than expected for yeah. sure. Yeah. And well, I, in, until. The hub stuff happened, which will tough. But I on, mean, but. the thing is, right? The hub was actually like all of that stuff was within these negotiations. Yeah. Right. Oh. So, like, I'm the the hub, notwithstanding, like they they got a plan together. Both the NHL and the NHLPA ratified it, and they got this CBA through that lasts another four or five, uh, another six seasons until the end of the or five seasons, whatever it is. And so, like, even with what we're going to get to, it's still a pretty amazing, like, thing for all the bureaucracy that goes around. Until a storm went through Edmonton last night and gave the arena water damage. Yep. All right. So, so you want to you wanna yeah. get on to that? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, let's get into it. You're all right. right. So we have the hotel assignments uh, graphics courtesy of TSN because we stole it from... <laughs> um, but it's you know we're not allowed to go into Canada so if they sue us then we're on the grounds of international and we're not allowed to go there so here we go um, <laughs> so we have the hotel assignments in both Toronto and Edmonton for the teams we have the Bruins, Lightning, Capitals, Flyers and Penguins going to Hotel X in Toronto uh, and the Hurricanes, Islanders, Maple Leafs Blue Jackets, Panthers, Rangers, and Canadians going to the Royal York in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's get into it. We're going to play a little game called 
Uh, who's got the best life? Uh, okay. Or be best, uh, best life in the bubble, I guess. Um, so we're going to look at Hotel X first, if you want to, if you wouldn't mind uh, uh, advancing a slide. I think we actually look at both of them at the same time. I just wanted to make sure that we had the right graphic up. All right, so Hotel X, home of the Bruins, Lightning, Capitals, Flyers, Penguins. Those look good enough to be the top five seeds in the Eastern Conference. Uh, as a guest of Hotel X Toronto by the Library Hotel Collection, they welcome you to enjoy their resort-style amenities. And yes, I'm reading this right off the website. <laughs> From April 1st, we will cha charge a nightly resort fee of just $25 plus uh, a hotel fee of tw uh, per room uh, to include all of the following. High-speed Wi-Fi, house car outbound service within five kilometers. Don't ask for conversions. I'm not doing that <laughs> shit. Um, five kilometers two is about three miles, by the way. Okay, you know what, Sean? Two fitness classes or two fitness class passes per room per day, uh, a forty dollar value, uh, twenty dollars off all spa services, access to the screening room film series. Yeah, I guarantee you, there's going to be no game film sessions going on in there. <laughs> uh, twenty four seven access. To the 10 XTO's primary fitness center gym, in room bottled water, teas, and Nespresso. <laughs> A library in business center <laughs> access, because nothing screams sophistication like fourth liners jamming into each other against a wall. Year round heated rooftop swimming pool. That's nice this time of year, I'm assuming that no one pees COVID into the pool. God, why? Why'd you have to say that? I, I know, I know. Low-hanging fruit. Why did you have to say that? Okay. Low fruit, low-hanging right, fruit, which on. is something okay. you can see in someone's bathing suit if they don't secure their... Okay, anyway. on to their competitor for the bottom seven teams, Wait, right? I'm not oh. done. 10% <laughs> off Ripley's Aquarium, 20% off the Toronto Zoo, and 35% off at medieval times. Yeah, none of that's happening. Okay, move on. What do you mean? Medieval times are all wearing masks anyway. <laughs> but do you really think an NHL player is going to go to medieval times? <laughs> well, uh, let me guess. Play on the eight squash courts yes, in the hotel. Yes. The four because... indoor tennis courts. What? Makes you think any of these guys are picking up tennis. They're not. They're going to convert a tennis court into like a giant gym, dude. No, they're going to convert the kids' play center to that. They uh. have a top golf, top golf swing suite, free weights, cardio equipment, a yoga studio, a spin studio, Pilates, fitness classes, as we said, personal training, private coaching, yoga sessions, and by the way, according to the website, the rooftop pool is coming in 2020. So let's just pray to God that it's finished, Sean. <laughs> Otherwise, right. Tom Wilson is just going to jump into a concrete block. All right. Just just move on to the Royal York, will you? All right. Yeah, sure. Uh, you get valet parking, internet pool, fitness center, a bar. Uh, you get bicycles. Uh, evening entertainment, pets are allowed, even though it's kind of hard to fit them in a suitcase. Um, private parking on-site, Wi-Fi, paid Wi-Fi. Nice to know that they're cheap enough to have tiers. Uh, hot tub, indoor pool, heated pool, uh, fitness rooms. Let's see here. A sauna, coffee shop, restaurant. They don't say what kind. That's a little bit uh, of an undersell. Uh, breakfast available. In the form of a buffet and in the room. Uh, complimentary instant coffee, complimentary tea, kids' meals, wine and champagne. Those aren't the same thing. They don't have wine and champagne for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Airport transportation. I don't think anybody's going anywhere anytime soon. Taxi service. I don't think you're going to need that. Conference facilities. I 
pretty sure everybody's going to be in one place. Banquet room, meeting rooms, well, that's good. Fax and photocopying, which is good for any uh, cheating scandal. The spa, salon, 24-hour security, which is good because the uh, the ex apparently doesn't have that. <laughs> uh, baggage storage, they call those hotel rooms. Uh, concierge. <laughs> Currency exchange, a non-smoking hotel. Oh, good. I was worried that athletes didn't take care of their bodies. <laughs> uh, a butler service and a door person. Pretty sure that's the same thing. Um, 24-hour front desk. Well, yeah. Dry cleaning, laundry service, and a shoe shine. Not a spit shine. Though. Okay, so uh, what teams have the better amenities? Uh, you know, at first I thought that would be the top five teams, but I think in terms of basic necessities, I think that the Royal York has you covered a little bit better. What do you I think? think? I think that they put more teams at the Royal York just because of the space, I guess. At least from the pictures, that's what it looks like. This Royal York building is gigantic. Yeah. Um... Although the hotel acts are just looking at a picture of the pool. Yeah, but uh, I'll go with it. It's more bougie at the hotel X, so they win. All right, and bonus points it's, for It's more bougie, bougie for, for no additional players. cost at the hotel X. Let me put it that way. Huh? I said bonus points for dropping the word bougie for hockey players in <laughs> hotels. Somehow you found a context where that works. <laughs> I... Hey, it works, you roll your eyes to me for anything I say, and then you turn around and say that shit. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Okay. We'll move on to the the uh, western. All right. All right. Moving on to the western. Conference. Aside from the fact that there's been a flood into a in a hockey arena, I guess. So. Uh, yeah, which apparently doesn't affect anything because they play on ice. Yeah. Who would have figured that one out? All right. So, the JW Marriott, unfortunately, someone has to stay at the uh, chain. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Royal York was part of a chain, too. I just yeah. don't remember which one. Uh, the Marriott, JW Marriott, which JW apparently is its own chain mm -hmm. because there's JWs all over the world. And yeah. then if you put an E in, t in front of uh, the W, then there's Jews everywhere. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So... Uh, the Blues, Avalanche, Golden Knights, Stars, Oilers, and Predators will all be uh, in the JW Marriott. So it's the top six teams go to one place on in the West. And the bottom six teams, not really bottom, you get what I'm saying. The Canucks, Flames, Jets, Wild, Arizona, Coyotes, and uh, Blackhawks will all be at Sutton Place. Basically, you know, if they just put the Oilers in Sutton place, they would have had all the Canadian teams outside of Montreal that made the playoffs in one hotel. Yeah. And then if they actually had the hub city in, like, the United States and then put all the Canadian teams in one hotel, basically you would have a new immigration policy on uh, the president's desk by the end of the uh. week. All right, so uh, do we want to move <laughs> to pictures of the these hotels? Yeah, uh, sure. Let's go through it. So, All right. So, so uh, the the basically the reason that the Edmonton Oilers are at JW Marriott is because it's right next to Rogers Place. Yeah, it, it, I think I don't. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then Rogers Place. That's not or JW Marriott. I don't think that's a hotel that's in the uh, Rogers. It. Is it the one that's in, uh, in, um, you get where I'm going, that's where the Blue Jays play? I don't think Do the so. Oilers and Blue Jays play in the same place? No, the Tor Toronto Blue Jays? Well, it's that real grass that's in there. You never know. <laughs> no! Look, we're, we're doing this. Uh, anyway. Edmonton Oilers Arena. So basically, right, the JW Marriott's connected to the dang uh, arena. Place. So, yeah, that's why half the teams are there. Uh, Sudden Place, it looks like your standard hotel. I don't know what else to okay. say about it. Don't give me shit for this. The The Oilers play in Rogers Place. The Blue Jays play in Rogers Center. Yes. Okay. So, 
give me some slack there. Uh, it's not my there fault that only one cities. company. It's not my fault only one company exists in all of Canada. <laughs> I mean, Ottawa plays with the Ottawa Tire Center or something. You get what I'm saying, dude? Or Canadian Tire Center, whatever it is. But um, like they're also in two different cities. That's what I'm giving you flack for. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I probably should figure that one out. <laughs> um. Yep. Yeah, just uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, without hearing about the amenities of either of these hotels, which we'll get into, JW Marriott teams win. End of story. Okay. <laughs> In terms of what? They're connected to an arena. They win. The other one is like a minute down the street. Also, the, the one that's a minute down the street just looks like a plain hotel then. Yeah. So there's every hotel yeah, in this country I mean, that isn't in Hawaii. The, the Royal York, like, at least, like, the the design of the yeah, outside. Yeah, it looked it like, look like a classy dated. I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, this thing is a concrete slab with some windows. <laughs> what's on the inside that counts? Bullshit. <laughs> All right, you want to tell us what's going on in these hotels? All right, so the Marriott has non-smoking in all public areas. They have car rentals. Not useful. That, yeah, well, it's going to be enticing for players. Basically, to have the resources right there to just get the fuck out and do whatever they want. Uh, they have concierge lounge hours. They have coffee and tea. That's original. They have babysitting in case you don't bring your child to the hub, I guess. I don't know. Uh, they have a foreign exchange nearby. Not in the hotel, nearby. Uh, they have daily housekeeping. Okay. Limousine service. Mm -hmm. uh, delivery from local restaurants, which, you know, you don't really have to have a hotel amenity for that. I'm pretty sure places just deliver. Um, mobility accessible rooms, wheelchair accessible. Room service, again, this is universal stuff. Yeah. Safe deposit boxes and a front desk. They have a front desk. That's going to be very important because when you check into the rooms, you really need something, a place to, you know, really put your arms down on the counter and just lay into them and just be like, okay. Uh, uh, and the yeah, valet dry cleaning. So this is, I argue to say, maybe the most bare bones for amenities. I'm sure there's Wi-Fi and stuff too, but in terms of their website, they didn't really list it. This is um, there has to be Wi-Fi, dude. Well, yeah, at the arena, they're all just scalping the arena Wi-Fi off in the yep. hotel. I only get two bars. <laughs> all right, how about the other place, the concrete right, slab Sutton. with some windows? No, it's it's Sutton Place, not other place. Close enough. So they have a pool. Okay. Very original. Uh, free Wi-Fi, pet friendly. They have air conditioning. That's going to be beneficial. <laughs> uh, they have a restaurant. Again, none of these Canadian places say what kind of restaurant. <laughs> I think that's a little bit rude. Uh, they have a gym. Breakfast is available. They are not going to, you know, just jam it down your throat. Okay. Uh, business services. That's good. These guys are definitely not businessmen. Uh, Parking is available. Someone mm -hmm. tells me that they're just going to need, you know, 10 to 12 buses. Um, uh, they have a bar, which is good because when you have six teams playing against each other, everybody's going to need a drink, which is either going to result in things getting just more relaxed or everybody's going to get suspended for bar fights. Um, uh, laundry services, room service. Let's see here. 24-hour front desk concierge services as well Let's see here. daily housekeeping oh. all these seem pretty plain wait there's more the staff is multilingual uh, uh they do have tour and ticket assistance and if you want to get married wedding services uh they have five meeting rooms their business center is 24 hours they have people that speak English, Spanish, and Filipino. You know, um, I was expecting French in there, but I guess not. I, I don't know. You would think, but this is Edmonton after all. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Let's see. You can note special requests in your booking. Okay. Um, wheelchair accessible pretty much everywhere. Um, let's see. There's a TV in the lobby. That's nice. Probably TVs um, in the room. Still, just on looks, I'm going with JW Marriott. I mean, there's probably more in a Marriott than in some place anyway. Anyway. All right, so, um, what about overall? Which hotel is the best amenity? Jeez, I, you know, I'm sticking with the Royal York. Okay. Okay. I, think yeah, that I definitely the Royal think Royal York has you covered pretty good. I definitely think Toronto Royal wins. I, I definitely I, think Toronto wins. The only thing is, if the Royal York doesn't have bilingual players or not players off staff, then. I guess you can give points to some place for multilingual. But I but mean, isn't Toronto these the place guys where they speak, speak French? English and, what? Isn't Toronto still in, like, French-speaking Canada? I mean, the thing is, Canada, I'm pretty sure, has three national languages. English, Spanish, and French. Yeah, I mean, so if, if something says they're multilingual in Canada, I would expect those three languages, then. Filipino, French, they both start with a P. All right. Uh, anyway, on to the uh, NBA. Oh, good. Yeah. So oh. we have a food update, a big-time food update. You better be thankful that these millionaires are eating good now. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Now, They're going to have tons of shit. They're going to be eating real good for lunch and dinner. But for breakfast, Mickey Waffles. Mickey Mouse Waffles, dude. Mickey fucking Waffles. And if you bite the ears off, Walt Disney is going to come out of the cryogenic chamber and beat your ass until you're Rajon Rondo and you have to opt out of the season because you have broken ribs or whatever the fuck happened there. All right, well, let, let's get the worst out of the way, or at least what we presume but, is the worst. By the way... I have a, an idea for a Rajon Rondo Orlando restart clothing line. Okay. Because Disney always sells like the corny shirts and stuff. Like I went to Disney and all I came back with was a stupid shirt. You can sell uh, a Rajon Rondo. I went to uh, Orlando and all I got was like a broken elbow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, let, let's get the worst of the food out of the way, which is not sure. the Mickey Mouse waffles in my opinion. It's really Joe's Crab Shack. Well, it depends what you're getting at Joe's Crab Shack. I'm sure you can get a quality fish and chips at, okay. at Joe's Crab Shack. But, but if least... we're going meat, big time red flag. <laughs> Nothing against Joe's Crab Shack, but I trust your fish way more than I trust the next meat. I don't trust you at all with chicken. <laughs> I don't even trust you with chicken of the sea tuna. <laughs> um, but I mean, to like it, it's Walt Disneyland. Like the food might not be good for you, but it's made to taste okay. I don't understand why they couldn't just open up five restaurants in Epcot and just <laughs> ship it over. What the? F uh, we're we're living in some reality here, where Walt Disney, I, I guess, doesn't benefit from like having any of their services other than the hotels open. Hey, nope, they're serving their food. <laughs> Which is still probably part of the hotel anyway. What part of Epcot is Mickey Mouse waffles in? Because I guarantee it ain't fucking Germany. This ain't <laughs> Belgian waffle shit. Uh, Alright, well, aside from that, you have a seafood room, which is probably where you should get your seafood over Joe's Crab Shack. Uh, the Ocean Air. What would you say? These are all fine if it wasn't Orlando. Uh, then you have... I feel like you're catching dumpster fish out there. I then could be have... wrong, but isn't Orlando not on the ocean? Uh, it's close, isn't it? I think it's inland enough that I'd be skeptical of no, what it, the fish It's fishing. close. It's fine. Um, then you have two steakhouses. Saltgrass Steakhouse and Morton Steakhouse. So... You better figure out which one's better and only have that one pretty early on. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, 
Then you have two kind of normal restaurants, I guess. Palm and Del Fresco's. What would you say? I like the logo of Palm, but I think... Here's my thing here with this overall. Is... I, I feel like if it were me, and granted I'm obviously not an athlete, I'd want more variety than this. Like, if my diet consisted of more of a variety, give me a Chinese food place. Not Obviously not like a Panda Express or anything. But, like, give me some local establishments. To say that you're offering variety is like, here's two seafood, two here's uh, two steakhouses, and the rest are just going to give you, like, uh, this place does burgers, spaghetti, everything. I mean, that's what the places probably do anyway, right? Like, it's a grill, right, so it's like your standard probably, like, wrap sandwiches and burgers. Right, which is fine, but, like, I mean, come on, these guys are spending three months in the bubble here. <laughs> yeah. You so know, other than I the one guy that, in the Kings who stepped over the bubble I boundaries. I hope that to get Disney seamless. food is diverse enough, man. Well, there's the guy on the Kings who, like, technically stepped off campus of the bubble to pick up his seamless food. So. And then issued a, an apology. He's like, yeah, we get it, dude. You're not actually sorry. <laughs> you, no. you went to pick up the food. I'm pretty sure they painted the lines out there or something. They, they <laughs> had to. I've marked the boundaries pretty clear. Yep. Uh, oh, oh, and apparently an NBA player already invited uh, an attractive woman to uh, his room. And we haven't even gotten to the week of the games yet. It's, the games will start till August 1st. Or no, that's the NHL. Uh, until uh, the last week of July, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. We're still like 10 days away. And there's already people trying, like, players trying to hook up. It's like, can you at least get the horniness under control <laughs> for a week? <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Anything else on food? Uh... Mickey Mouse and his waffles. All right. So, uh... what else do we have? That that's it uh anything to close out any sarcastic remarks from you or did you just go through all of them during the uh... did i not have enough during this episode <laughs> jeez i basically had you roll your eyes into the back of your head yeah. um <laughs> yeah our, our fantasy baseball we're doing fine it's not like everybody that we've drafted is getting covid um yep. Uh, or struck in the head, or I mean, at this point, don't be surprised if by like week two of the season, someone gets struck by lightning. Hopefully not. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like Texas is a hotbed for that, and we have Joey Gallo. So, yep. Oh, and Yasiel Puig signed with the Braves, and then immediately got COVID. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, dude. He signed with the Braves to uh, add a nice uh, contributing bat. In the case that Freddie Freeman misses time because of his uh, uh, recovery from COVID, and then the guy that they just signed gets COVID. Yep. So, all right, you can't always do smart shit. All right, well, thanks for tuning in, and catch you next time.